What's up, y'all? Welcome to Political Fight Club. I'm Robert Durden. This episode, I'm going to give you guys a couple of big shout-outs. Um, one of the things that you guys are doing is awesome for the country, and I'm going to tie that in with kind of a news story. And then another thing that's awesome that you guys are helping me out with, so um, this one's really about you. And that's, you know, I do the best I can to listen to everything you guys say um, and take it under consideration and be sort of a channel that really interacts um, with its viewers. And I also have a surprise for you guys. I'm, I have something in the works that is pretty exciting. I'm working behind the scenes with some people to release a sort of project. Um, so I'll let you guys know when that's ready. It'll be pretty soon, like in the next month or so. That's exciting. And what I will be doing in that time is trying to make my show more interactive, which means I'm going to try to do live streams and have, um, if I can, talk to you guys as much as possible doing via like call-ins. So we'll see how that pans out, but that's a surprise that's in the works and you know, I'll let you know when all the details are worked out and when I scrape together the money to like actually be able to pull it off, but I am working on it. Um, so first and foremost, I'm gonna make fun of somebody um, and I, I won't make fun of him for very long, but my man Good Politic Guy had a lot of <laughs> comments on a tweet that he made earlier where on, on YouTube as a creator, you can check through the analytics page who your viewers also view a lot of, right? And they give you like the top 10 or the top 15. So it, it kind of tells you what flock you're running with. And good politic guy who I did rank previously on a couple of uh, power rankings episodes really early on. But if you noticed, I haven't really done that recently. His, uh, his, his rhetoric is still very good and he's a very sharp kid. But uh, for reasons unknown, he tends to really like care about the Kyle Kalinske's and the more democratic reformationist narratives, which is why I've kind of leaned away from ranking him lately, though I do watch most of his stuff anyway. He posted a picture of like the top five <laughs> of channels whose viewers view his channel, also view these five channels, and threw it out there like it was a flex, and people are like, uh-uh. <laughs> I'm going to read you the top five, and then I'm going to read to you guys my top five and explain to you guys why I love you so much. So he threw out his top five in order was The Humanist Report, Kyle Kalinske, David Dole, The Rational National, Sam Cedar, and Vosh. And I was like... Oh, my man, are you sure you want to be releasing that to the public? I wouldn't want my viewers knowing that because that's all Democratic reformationists right there. The only one who has any semblance of credibility anymore is Kalinsky, and it's dwindling. But then again, I've never checked mine. So I went and checked mine, and it was, uh, you guys did not let me down. I'm going to read you the top five, and I did not have any of these people other than Kalinsky in my top 15. So my top... <laughs> My top five was Jimmy Dore, Jackson Hinkle, The Vanguard, Breaking Points, and Fred Hampton Leftists. And then beyond that, it took to number six to get to uh, Secular Talk, and then I didn't have any of those other people in there at all. I had uh, uh, Hardlands Media, Savvy Sabs, Glenn Greenwald, The Bad Faith Podcast. I guess I'm throwing out the right rhetoric because that's exactly the company I want to keep. So I want to shout out to you guys because of course that means to me that I, you know, those are the people I idolize for the most part. And even Kyle to a large extent, I used to idolize recently. So that top 10 for me, that's the type of flex that I would throw out there, but I wouldn't do that anyway. But it was funny because it backfired a little bit on Mac. Now, if I may also, Mac has about, he does pretty well. He's got 8,000 subs or so, but his views are similar to mine per video and I have one-fifth that amount. And the reason is is that he tends to be less about attacking the squad, or at least just critiquing them very, like, you know, calmly, whereas all those other channels and myself tend to just, like, spit fire against those, those fucking sellouts. So if I may offer some advice, just start spitting harder against, you know, the establishment and stop worrying about democratic reformation and who the Democratic Party is going to you know, allow in as a justice Democrat and then you co-opt in the future. That's not a good, you know, narrative. That's why people aren't picking up what you're laying down. Now, let's talk about the jobs report. Biden's jobs report came out and I reported that it was hilariously bad and that they were aiming for well over 500,000 new jobs created in September. They only got 194,000. They were really aiming for like more close to a million. 
And so this is, uh, you know, a stupendous under uh, underachievement, even for Biden. Now, remember, Bernie Sanders said that he was going to be FDR-like, right? So let's remember that when we talk about this next stat. Approximately 4.3 million people quit their job last month. Now, this is actually for the August numbers, the ones that just came out, right? So that means that nearly 3% of the entire workforce quit their job last month. That is absolutely insane. That's the highest ever recorded. So what that tells me is that there's a lot of people out there that they had some shitty ass job that wasn't worth staying on for because we're not getting Medicare. We, we don't, a lot of people don't have health care, and uh, these jobs don't pay anything and they don't give you any benefits. So it's like, no, for safety reasons, I'll make it work at home, if I'm making eight bucks an hour, I can figure out how to do that at home. Now I'm going to tie this in with something else that's been going around, which is the, the false narrative that there is a worker shortage. There is not a worker shortage. This is propaganda. There is plenty of, uh, there's plenty of work to go around and there's also plenty of workers to do that work. What is what there is not a lot of are CEOs and corporate assholes willing to pay their workers a minimum wage. Now, this brings me kind of full circle to my main point, which is all Biden had to do if he really gave a damn about creating jobs and you know, get not having a worker shortage is just pass the minimum wage. If he overruled the parliamentarian and got Joe Manchin and Kirsten Cinema on board, easy peasy, done. Then you don't have a you don't have a labor shortage. So this is a false narrative concocted by our corporate overlords to make it seem like the onus is on the workers. It's the workers who are lazy. It's the workers who don't want to go back to work, or there's just not enough people who want to work. We're just a lazy nation. No, we're not. That's what a slave master says, and that's the narrative they're running with. It's all false. What is actually happening, guys? And this brings me really full circle to my my thank you. <laughs> First, thank you guys for giving me that awesome top 10, but more, I'm so proud of you guys. It seems to me that the general strike is starting and it's soft right now. It's evolving slowly. The strikes across the nation show us that, but the fact that they're running with this, there's a worker shortage thing, and the fact that so many people we know last month quit their jobs, people are going home and they're staying home. We are not going back to those shitty ass, you know, $7.25 an hour jobs without benefits. And so what is happening here is, is, is a trend that I want to build upon. This tells me that there's a tug of war going on between labor in this country, which is poor people. That's mostly who the people who quit those jobs and who are now staying home and trying to grift and trying to figure out a way to make money on the side without going back to those shitty ass corporate jobs. And the Biden administration, who does not want to give those people, uh, you know, a minimum wage or Medicare for all so that at least they can go back to work with health benefits so they know they're not going to die if they get Delta. No, what is the Biden administration doing? They're ending unemployment benefits and the eviction moratorium. They're trying to force those people to go back to work for slave wages during a pandemic and without giving them health care. And labor is saying, piss right the fuck off, Joe. We're going to just stay home. Fuck you. We'll figure out a way. Because there are ways that you can make money at home from, that makes you more than $7.25 an hour, and you don't have to risk your life. So I love this. Let's keep going. Everybody, I want 5% to quit their job next month. I want us to aim for that for November, let's say for November, and don't go back. We can get, if we just go, you know, keep quitting our jobs and just agree that we're not going to go back to these shitty ass jobs until they give us 30 bucks an hour, then eventually we'll just build slowly towards a general strike, which is in two days, by the way, October 15th. Don't forget it. Don't go to work. Don't go to work. But I don't think it's going to be a date that actually does it. I don't think there's going to be a day where all of us just naturally kind of like stay home and or stay home for a week. I think that it's going to happen slowly and it's already happening and I want to accelerate it and try to pass it along that this is a good trend and the idea should be do not go back to work. Everybody quit. If you, you don't like your job and you're worried about Delta and they're not going to give you health care and they're not going to give you a, a living wage, fuck them, go home. As Doug Stan, Stanhope says, steal some shit and then no call, no show. 
So that's what I would do. Certainly do not go to work uh, October 15th for the general strike. Pass it along. But guys, this is encouraging to me. The fact that the mainstream media is running with the narrative of, oh, there's a worker shortage, means that they are now in their... They're in their last ditch efforts to demonize the workers into coming back to work for slave wages and without health care, and they got nothing. They got nothing else. They're not. And so the thing is, so it's it's scaring people away to the point now where it's quantifiable. People are just not. And this is going to get worse as Delta ramps up this winter, as the as the weather gets colder. Nobody's going to want to drive in a fucking blizzard to risk their lives at McDonald's for ten bucks an hour. I want more people to quit. I want more people to stay home. I want us to do more mutual aid. And trust me when I tell you, I've been out of work for almost a year now. Actually, almost exactly a year. Um, you can make more than eight bucks an hour just doing shit at home. We have the internet now. There's other things you can do. I used to used to uh, buy books at Good, Goodwill and new books or books that I knew were valuable and just sell them on eBay. And I paid my rent for like three months just doing that. I'd bounce around to two or three good, Goodwills a day and uh, drive around you know, my city and just try to pick up books wherever I could at used bookstores and then resell those online. And I actually did much better. Now, I'm not saying that you should do something like that because during COVID, a lot of times you have to stay home. But of course, I did this YouTube show. My wife sells stuff online. She's, a, she's an artist. There are ways that you can make money at home and screw the establishment. Trust me, you have a talent that is exploitable that you can use to make money more than you can off of, you know, flipping burgers or working at Subway or Starbucks. Fuck those people. Don't go back to work. Do something at home and certainly don't go back or don't work on October 15th. They can go fuck themselves. So um, I'm proud of you. I think this is great. It makes me happy that the jobs report is not uh, turning out well because, of course, Bernie said that Biden was going to be FDR, right? Nothing could be more FDR-like than what Biden has done so far and what I suspect he's going to continue to do quantifiably. But also, I told you so. I told you so. And, and it also proves the point that he's Biden is trying to force people back to work during a pandemic without giving them health care or a minimum wage. And it's pissing the people off so much that now we know they're basically like saying, fuck this, fuck this president, fuck this admin. You can go fuck yourselves. I'm never going to, I'm not going to work for your corporate overlords. So they're going to hate you. So let's do a general strike. Let's if we can't get it done on a single day, which I doubt that there's going to be an event monumental enough to get an actual general strike started on a single day, let's keep wading deeper into that pool, guys, and eventually we'll be swimming. You know, we just take another step into that cold water every day, and eventually you're, you're completely submerged, and we can swim in the cold water in this analogy, and we will get what we want. So keep quitting, and don't go back. Pass it along. Anyway, love you guys. This is this makes me super proud, and also thank you for being the type of viewers that um, also view those other awesome channels that I just mentioned earlier. To be mentioned or to be like considered part of the like Jimmy Dore, Jackson Hinkle, Fred Hampton leftist vanguard breaking points crowd. Hey, <laughs> that's something I can flex on. So you made my day. Appreciate you guys. I'll talk to you later.